Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today, courtesy of Ozark Machine Gun, we are taking a look at a second model Meliore semi-automatic pistol. Now, this particular pistol was actually made after World War II, but in order to give you the whole story of it, we have to go back to before World War I. So there's going to be a little bit of uh, like the, the big whiteboard with newspaper articles and bits of red string all across it on this, so bear with me for a moment. What we start with is the first model Milior, which was more often marketed as the Gifico. This is a gun that looked like the FN 1900. Now the FN 1900 was the first truly fantastically successful civilian pocket semi-auto pistol. They sold hundreds of thousands of them. It was the gun that was responsible for rescuing FN from potential financial collapse, and really led FN to be the huge company that it remains today. Now, at this time, the gun was, or the, the patents, were owned by a company called uh, Robarfis and El Derkov. Uh, Der Kerkov. Uh, two guys, RK was their little grip logo emblem. And they had a registered trademark of Gifico, which was actually owned by a different company that did some of the marketing, called Janssen Fies, Janssen and Sons. Uh, and they also had a trademark on the name Milior, which is Latin for better or superior. This is fairly common of uh, Belgian pistol trade names to use that sort of thing. So the first guns are patented, patterned after uh, the very successful and very popular FN model of 1900. And these are sold starting I believe about 1907. We'll do a video on one of those when I have the opportunity to find one. However, FN improves its design, and introduces in 1910 the FN 1910, which looks very much like this pistol. Uh, the FN 1910 is a substantial improvement over the 1900. It's a really a much more modern layout, more modern pistol, much more cost effective to manufacture, and lo and behold the guys who were knocking off the FN 1900 switch it up and start to knock off the FN 1910. And that's where the second model comes in. They patented the technical developments in this model uh, just before World War I, 1913 or 1914. However, this was a Belgian manufacturing company. Belgium gets invaded by the Germans in 1914, and they're not doing any handgun production, certainly, well, they're not doing any handgun production for the duration of the war. This pistol wouldn't actually go into production until 1920, after the war and after some of the reconstruction of Belgium. So at that point, uh, what we have is the second model Meliore. There were two sizes. This is the large one, there was also a small size, and they were offered in 25 and 32 caliber. Now while this pistol looks like an FN 1900, it's actually mechanically totally different from an FN 1900 and has some very clever uh, technical elements to it. So let me show you. As I said, this is the large frame version. These were originally uh, made in 32. They had a seven round magazine in 32 ACP. This particular example is in 380. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, it holds six rounds in the same length of magazine. That's a pretty typical uh, difference between a third, you know, the, the guns that are offered in 32 and 380 typically have one less round of capacity in 380. Now, on the pistol, we have all sorts of safeties. There's actually a magazine safety. There is a grip safety here on the back. This originated as a full length grip safety, and it was at about serial number 50,000 uh, that they modified the design and uh, cut the length of the grip safety down to just be half the, half the length of the grip there. There is also a manual safety right here, so safe and fire. The markings are a little bit hard to read here, but we have the most important thing, which is our trade name, Meliore and then a couple of Belgian patents there, and some proof marks. Here on the opposite side we have a serial number on the slide and the frame. Interestingly the caliber is not marked anywhere on the gun. We then also have uh, Meliore uh, logos on the grips. Now on the FN 1910 to disassemble the gun you would, un you would rotate out a little uh, plug at the muzzle which allows you to take the recoil spring out. The Meliore actually has a captive recoil spring. The Meliore is disassembled using this interesting little wedge. So what I do here is lift this lever up, and then I can push this wedge out the side of the slide there. So that's going to come out. There's a little spring that holds it in place. You do want to have the striker dropped when you do this, by the way, so check it and then dry fire it. 
and then I can just pull the slide right off the front of the gun, and the breech block is a separate component right here. So the breech comes off separately, uh, as opposed to most pistols where this is integrated into the slide. We then have our captive recoil spring right there with a little collar that wraps it around the barrel and holds it in place right here. So actually a lot of cool features in this. We can take out the striker here, that does double as the ejector by the way, so when the pistol cycles back uh, that's going to protrude out the breech face and it's going to push the empty cartridge out. We can take this out and we've got the striker and its spring and its little guide rod right here. When this is installed in the pistol, this striker sits right there, that holds it in position and allows the spring to compress when the slide cycles back. The striker itself hooks on that surface right there, and when I pull the trigger that sear drops. It's not dropping all the way right now because I don't have a magazine in the gun. There we go. Having put a magazine in, now you can see the, the full amount of drop on that sear to release the striker and fire the pistol. We also have an out of battery safety right here. This is connected to the trigger bar, and if it's pushed down the trigger can be pulled, but it doesn't have any, it doesn't come in contact with the striker. That bar sticks up in the path of the slide, and cut into the slide is one little recess right there. So when the slide's fully closed, that is right over that uh, bar, allows it to lift up, and allows the pistol to fire. If the slide's not in battery, it's going to push this down and prevent you from firing as a safety mechanism. So there's your second pattern Meliore automatic pistol. It's really kind of easy to see why these would turn out to be very successful. Uh, the design is well thought out, it's mechanically uh, very very reliable, very effective, uh, the parts are well manufactured, this is a gun that feels good in the hand, it cycles well in the hand, obviously proper amount of care was put into the, the production. It has a lot of features that were popular at the time, multiple different safety mechanisms, uh, and then things like the captive recoil spring make it a very easy pistol to assemble and disassemble. You know, uh, really is a question of what's not to like. Despite being what some people would consider just a blatant marketing grab, you know, try to try to fool people who are looking for an FN1910 and like, ah, oh, this looks the same and it's a lot cheaper, so it, I'm sure it's just as good. In reality, these actually were pretty darn good pistols. They were popular. They remained in production all the way up until World War II. Uh, of course production ceased again while Germans occupied Belgium again. Uh, but then production started back up after World War II as well. Uh, these were well-made guns, and, and there was nothing particularly wrong with them. After World War II they would introduce a 22 rimfire and a 380 caliber version, both on the large frame, and that 380 is what we have here. Uh, they didn't survive past the 1950s. Um, at that point other pistols would, would take over and take their place. But this is uh, one a, a, a rather rare example, I think, of a Belgian-made copy of a pistol that actually turns out to be really quite successful in its own right. So hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, taking a look at this guy. Uh, big thanks to Ozark Machine Gun for loaning it here so I could show it to you guys on camera. If you find yourself in Missouri, definitely uh, make a point to stop by his machine gun rental range. He has a whole bunch of very cool vintage historical and interesting machine guns that you can try out on his range. Thanks for watching.